All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbean.com. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to one more show. Today, we are going to talk about a very interesting uh, research paper, which discusses that how does the coronavirus, the SARS-CoV-2, disrupts our cells machinery to cause the disruption of interferon production. Now, remember, inter interferon are necessary to be produced when our when the viruses arrive in our cells and the interferon causes the neighboring cells to become more strong and have antiviral genes open that would then produce proteins that would help against the virus. And uh, I wanted to connect one thing early in the beginning and that is that remember we've talked about ivermectin that ivermectin prohibits the SARS-CoV-2 from sending its cargo inside the nucleus to tear down the cellular defenses. And that is how ivermectin really props up our cells and makes them strong and stand against the SARS-CoV-2 and protect themselves. So today we are going to look at those mechanisms that are used by SARS-CoV-2 to actually tear down our cells. That is the discussion. Welcome everyone. And the quick update on the cool beans. So there is uh, the, the person who is 70 years old, he, uh, has almost recovered. His recovery started when the ivermectin had started. Before that, he was continuously going down. He was on remdesivir and dexamethasone. After four or five days of uh, ivermectin with zinc, vitamin D, vitamin C, and quercetin type things, he has now, uh, today, the message that I received was that he is uh, breathing oxygen saturation. Let me just very quickly open it up here. Um, so the, uh, he's saying that Islam alaikum sir, here is the result. So pulse A4 per minute, which is pretty good. Blood pressure 110 by 80, respiratory rate 22 per minute, which is very good. And the oxygen saturation at room, temp, uh, room air 95% to 96%. That is excellent. So uh, this is a good news here. Interestingly, this doctor whose father we're talking about, he has then uh, referred me to one more doctor whose father is also sick. And this is the third time doctors are referring. So probably one of the reason is that my circle is mainly doctors. And second is that doctors or medical students or students who are going out and then coming back, they are bringing the virus back home and then their parents are getting sick. So they themselves are young, so they can take care of it better. So anyways, the, the second doctor who contacted me today, his father is also uh, going through COVID, has just developed the basilar creps, and we started them on ivermectin, and he's stable. So that is the update on the cool beans. Now let's talk about the, the research paper itself. It's a beautiful paper. I love it. So the takeaway from this paper is the following that the virus, the SARS-CoV-2, causes interferon production to, to be reduced. And not only interferon production, but interferon secretion from the cell to be reduced as well. The result of that is that the cellular defenses are torn down and the cells become sitting ducks and they cannot take care of themselves very well. And once again, ivermectin actually props up the cells and helps them protect themselves and is very effective. So let's see. The study is, so this is drbean.com. And then here, this is the study, not study, this is actually a research. It is published in Cell 8 October. And this is the title here, SARS-CoV-2 disrupts splicing, translation, and protein trafficking to suppressed host defenses. So that is what we're going to talk about. What are these three things? And if you look at this uh, paper, in this paper, this is one paragraph here, which is the most important one, this one, <clears throat> where they're showing various proteins of the virus and how do they affect our uh, immune system. So let's have that in my illustrations. So as I just mentioned, what they have seen is that the SARS-CoV-2 disrupts the host messenger RNA splicing. And I would explain what that is in a second. It disrupts the translation of proteins from messenger RNA. And I would explain that. 
and then protein trafficking or secretion of proteins or various substances from the cell. And major hit is on the interferon gamma, interferon alpha and beta both actually, and they are reduced. Now let's see how does that happen. So look at this SARS-CoV-2 here, coronavirus. So this is the coronavirus. When the coronavirus arrives in our body and goes into a cell, what it does is it produces the first messenger RNA that is in it, this part, the RNA, the genetic code that it has. That genetic code, when it is translated, and I would explain what translation is, it makes enzymes and proteins that belong to this virus. The virus actually produces about 27 proteins. Out of those 27 proteins, there are four proteins that are structural. So these are spike protein is one. It, it is part of the structure of the virus. Then N proteins, these black dots that have made on RNA, these are another structural protein. Then there is M protein or matrix protein, that is these green proteins here in the envelope. And then the E protein or envelope protein, these are made in black here. So there are four proteins that are structural. In addition to those four, there are seven proteins that we do not know what do they do. They are called accessory proteins and we, we do not know exactly how do they function. Then there are 16 proteins that are non-structural proteins. So these are viral enzymes. These are virus attack dogs that go and hurt our cells. So these are called non-structural proteins 1 to 16. So what kind of those proteins are? We have talked about some of those. Remember the, these guys, the helicases. And then remember RDRP and then the proofreaders and various kinds of supplicers and so on. So there are various kinds of enzymes or the machinery that the virus brings the genetic code for. And then in a cell, it makes that machinery, which in turn then helps make the virus increase in number and then be packaged into new viruses and get out of the cell. So now what happens is, what is our cell's behavior? When a virus arrives in our cell and is starting to take over the machinery of the cell and makes more viral, viral components, what do our cells do? So check this out. So imagine that this is a viral RNA. So viral RNA arrived in our cell. What it does is it causes a few proteins or enzyme of our cell to be down-regulated. What is the virus trying to do? Virus is trying to make more copies of itself. At the same time, virus is trying to cause our immune system to suppress so that our immune system does not kill it before it makes its copies. So what, what is it doing over here? There is an enzyme here, Rig1 and MDA5. It activates them or actually suppresses them, which in turn causes IRF3, another enzyme, to be uh, translocated into the, uh, to be suppressed from translocating into the nucleus. Now, what is the function of IRF3? When IRF3, this enzyme, goes into the nucleus, it causes the nucleus to produce the messenger RNA or the genetic material that goes into the ribosome, which is a machinery in our cell that makes protein from the ribosomes, ribosome, uh, sorry, from the messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is like a template or instruction, like a recipe of making a protein. So when this messenger RNA goes to this chef over here, then interferon, for example, interferon will be produced. And I have written it INF. I should have written IFN. Interferons are produced. And then those interferons are released. Now, the benefit of the interferon is that the nearby cells when they have interferon come and attach on their surfaces, then these cells open up their genes that would allow them to make antiviral defense systems. This is how our cells protect. So what happened is one of the community member is sick. That is this cell. This member activated its antiviral defense system and created interferon and caused the interferon to be released out and gave a signal to the nearby cells to say, hey guys, 
there is a virus it's soon going to arrive in you as well so before it arrives you should become strong so those cells preemptively open up their genes that would allow them to become stronger so this is the normal mechanism of our body's response and when a virus arrives in our body our interferon production goes up about 1000 fold so it is really an important response now virus's job is to figure out ways to tear down our defenses so that virus can thrive so what are various examples for example if you look at human cytomegalovirus what it does is when it comes into our body in our in our cell remember yesterday we talked about mhc1 mhc or major histocompatibility 1 complex is a protein in our cells which would have parts of the virus attached to it and then it would present that protein on the surface of the virus and the benefit of that is that once the antigen is presented on the surface of the cell not the virus then the immune system will become active and they would take care of the virus so cytomegalovirus what it does is it actually suppresses the release of mhc1 so this is like if my hands are the virus antigen presenters then it would tie my hands and it would not let me open my hands at all so now i cannot present the virus particles outside to the immune system to say hey i am sick i have a virus in me and look at the particles what a clever mechanism that what it does is it traps mhc inside the cell it does not let it come out of endoplasmic reticulum that is a machinery where mhc1 is built or attached to the antigens so that is how H, uh, uh, cytomegalovirus works if you look at polio virus for example what polio virus does is that when it is it arrives in our cells it creates proteins that degrade the mechanisms that are necessary for ribosome to work ribosome is the machinery part in our cell which helps make proteins so the result is that the messenger rna or the recipes are not read by the chef the ribosome and proteins are not made and the cell becomes weak and it dies that is how polio virus works similarly influenza virus that causes flu what it does is when when it arrives in our cell it makes proteins that would act as splicers splicers are like scissors they cut rna or genetic material so this clever virus actually makes scissors which would cut the recipes up the rna would be cut up when the recipe is cut up our ribosome the chef doesn't know what to cook and it cannot make more proteins and the cell would once again become sick and cell would die so these are some of the mechanisms by which various various viruses protect themselves while they are replicating or increasing in number in our cells now let's see what these researchers have found about sars-cov-2 and fascinating that in how many ways this virus attacks our cell and kind of suppresses it from protecting itself so the first part disruption of splicosomes or splicosomes what does that mean what happens is imagine that if you look at this part this is a nucleus of our cell inside the nucleus on regular basis various genes open up from the dna those genes when they open up we make a copy of the genetic material we take a photocopy of that genetic material or recipe and then that photocopy is called a messenger rna within the nucleus there is a small monster enzyme sitting in there what it does is it goes through this copy that we made and removes extra rna that is useless in it so when we make copies of the genes there are sometimes if you see here the black parts here these are called introns and they are unnecessary parts so imagine if you have a recipe and the recipe is to cook something and then within the recipe there are some 
verses written as well or some quotations written as well which are not necessary for the recipe but they are just there this supplysiosome enzyme its function is to remove those introns or those quotations because they are unnecessary the result is that once they are removed the final rna that is made does not have these introns in it or those quotations and the recipe is left that recipe would then come out in the cytoplasm of the cell where it would go to a ribosome the chef who would read that recipe and would produce a protein this is called translation this process of making a copy of the genetic material is called transcription and then when the genetic material is cleaned up and brought out and given to the ribosome when ribosome reads it and makes proteins that is called translation now check this out sars cov is brutal virus look what it does non structural protein number 16 of the sars cov 2 nsp 16 binds with the u1 and u2 rna components of spliceosome this spliceosome here this little enzyme here that cleans up our rna it it is a big complex of many rnas and many proteins that are sitting together so there are in this complex there are a couple of components called u1 and u2 the viruses the viruses nsp16 protein that comes in and attaches here with this guy and disables it so when it disables the spliceosome the spliceosome cannot do a good function of cleaning up the rna and so the recipes that come out to the ribosome for making the proteins or cooking the proteins those recipes are incorrect and we end up making wrong interferon or making wrong mhc2 or mhc1 or other proteins so what a clever way of this stupid virus and i know that some people are going to put comments out there it is so funny i receive so many comments when i call this a stupid virus that god made this virus as well who are you to call this a stupid virus and that's fine you you call it whatever you want for me it is causing a lots of damage so it is a stupid virus so what happens is <clears throat> this this stupid virus has this weird thing that it actually causes our enzyme to be torn down that cleans up the recipes and so our proteins that are made in a sick cell are incorrect proteins of course the cell is going to die of course it's not going to be able to produce interferon because the proteins are, it is producing a wrong proteins they are disabled proteins so that is one mechanism that it uses and keep in mind that ivermectin blocks these behaviors of sars cov 2 by stopping these cargo so this this uh, nsp16 that goes into the the nucleus and causes spliceosome to be disrupted ivermectin potentially blocks that to come in so when it will not come in then this behavior would not occur and our proteins will be fine and one part of those proteins is interferons and interferon will be structured correctly these will not be disabled interferons and they would function correctly so that is one another way sars cov 2 causes an issue the second mechanism is that ribosome his this is a ribosome what is this thing this is this chef over here inside the cell that takes up rna or the recipe and makes protein from it right so that is called translation this ribosome and i want to apologize to this ribosome yesterday i forgot its name and i kept saying what is this thing called it has forgiven me that is why it has been smiling all day today so ribosome here has smaller components in it and you can i think you can understand that ribosomes function is paramount for our cell because it's going to take the recipe or rna which is here and it's going to use that rna to make proteins which are essential parts of our cells now the virus has one more non structural protein called nsp1 
that NSP1 protein binds to the 18 S RNA on the 40 S subunit of the ribosome. You can think about it this way. It goes and attaches to the chef and allows the shelf not to pick up the RNA and work with it. It does not allow the shelf chef to take the recipe and work with it. So imagine if you're cooking something and you have a recipe on the side, if someone does not let you look at the recipe and hold it up and see it, then you cannot use that recipe. That is what the virus does. The NSP1 goes and connects with the 18S RNA subunit of the 40S subunit of the ribosome. That causes ribosome not to function correctly. And when it does not function correctly, the RNA that is sitting around saying, please ribosome, use me to make interferons or make MSC1 or make MSC2 or another millions of proteins. Those protein productions are gone. So translational mechanism is disrupted. The cook of our cell that makes essential life-saving proteins are gone, is not working correctly. So this is the second mechanism by which the SARS-CoV-2 disrupts our cell from functioning correctly and from making antiviral systems in it. Of course, interferon gamma has to go through this process as well to be formed. And so when this happens, interferon gamma is not going to be formed or going to be formed in smaller quantities. Third mechanism. Here, if you see this, I think you can now recognize this little thing. So once again, this is in within our cell. This is a ribosome. Ribosome is the same guy that would pick up the RNA and make proteins. But these are the proteins that are going to be secreted outside the cell. So what happens is within our cells, there is a protein called this red one over here. It is called signal recognition particle or SRP. This protein's function in, in, at a high level is to pick up a ribosome, pull it near the cell surface. This is like you bring the chef near the door of the cell or the house and say, please cook here and whatever you cook, throw it outside to distribute it to people. That is what it does. The signal recognition particle is a protein in our cells that brings the ribosome near the cell membrane and then when the ribosome is making proteins near the cell membrane, then those proteins are easily entering the channels and ex exit the cell. What protein can that be? For example, interferon. When we want interferons to be secreted, one mechanism is this. There are other mechanisms as well where we make the protein, then we package it up in Golgi operators, and then we secrete it out. There is that mechanism as well. But this mechanism is true as well. And guess what does this virus do? Virus has non-structural protein number eight and nine. These proteins connect with the signal recognition particle. That little chaperone that brings the chef to the door to say, when you cook something, please throw it out, give it out to people. When it disrupts this mechanism, then the cell cannot produce proteins that will be released. For example, interferon gamma, interferon alpha, interferon beta. So the result is this is the protein trafficking. The result is that the protein trafficking from a cell is reduced. So if you see here, what has this virus done? It has caused, number one, to make incorrect proteins. Number two, the protein making factory is damaged. So less proteins are made. Number three, these proteins are blocked from being released to outside. This virus would actually really disrupt our cell. The result of that is that our cells cannot produce many things, including interferons. And when the interferons are not produced correctly, then the cell is torn down. Now, let me just, that is a discussion for today. I want to clinically correlate it as well that, all right, what's the benefit of knowing all of this? Of course, that means we can give interferon from outside because we know that in SARS-CoV-2, interferon production goes thousands of times down, and this is the possible mechanism. We can give ivermectin. Ivermectin disrupts the vi viral cargo to the nucleus and disrupt this behavior of the virus that happens in the nucleus. So we can give that. Number three, we can make new drugs that would disrupt 
the NSP 16 and NSP 1 and NSP 8 and 9 so that they cannot disrupt our cells. So there are multiple ways clinically this information can be used to help. I think accidentally we found ivermectin does. I think interferons would help as well. So let me just very quickly now show you the, this is a very beautifully written detailed discussion. I'm gonna show you a couple of more things and then we stop. And that is the following. So what they are saying, okay, so what is the benefit of this all? Number one, they are saying here, Accordingly, if each independent mechanism moderately affects interferon levels, those three mechanisms we discussed, then it is possible that the interferon production is dramatically reduced in our cells, which is observed for SARS-CoV-2. Then they're saying it may be possible to develop drugs to block NSP1 to 18 and other interactions so that the these, this disruption does not occur. Then they're saying many proteins involved in antiviral immunity are supplied and or membrane anchored, for example, MIC1 or 2. So they're saying, now please go and look at other proteins too. We looked at interferon itself. Maybe other proteins are also reduced because of this mechanism. And maybe we can disrupt this mechanism by making drugs against it. And I would say that just give interferon. And finally, they have given a few limitations of their study which are interesting to know. Number one, their limitation is that the experiments that they have done are not on human infected cells. They are in lab in vitro. That's one limitation. Second limitation is we did not explore the role of viral protein interaction with messenger RNAs. So they did not look at every single messenger RNA. They primarily focused on interferon RNAs. Third, they did not know how the virus disrupts fundamental cellular processes while maintaining its own production. So if the virus is causing messenger RNA disruption, if it is causing ribosomal disruption, if it is causing the secretion disruption, then how is the virus able to take care of its own self because it is also using the same machinery? And then finally, they say, although we showed that viral disruption of these essential cellular functions can suppress interferon, other roles of host cell shut down in viral pathogenesis and in suppression, other aspects of antiviral immunity, including possible roles in adaptive immune responses, have not been explored. What they're saying is there are more proteins that can be explored to see if they are working correctly or not. So this is the discussion for today. I hope you you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed looking at the mechanism. I'm just going to look at a couple of comments here, and then we uh, we break for today. OK, so Debbie. Um, I tried to ask and tell you about interferon treatments, and you told me no way because it's too dangerous out. I told you about cyclofuron, which is, um, Debbie, is that a discussion with me? Maybe I forgot. Uh, <laughs> Arun, if protein translation is blocked, then how viral proteins are made? And sir, sorry to see that introns are not useless. There is nothing useless. In, absolutely. The, the reason we call them useless is that they are removed from the genetic material to produce the proteins. If they stay in, the protein that is made is unstructured or not correctly structured and doesn't function correctly. So these are removed. We feel that somewhere in the past, when hundreds and thousands of millions of years ago, our genetic material had these substances to do something special for us, which we do not need today. So now that material or the, the recipe is present, but we have to remove it to make proteins. If we make protein with the recipe, the proteins are malfunctioned and we become sick. So I totally understand. And I, I said to you that many people would write comments that, hey, you do not know if something is right or not. Maybe we do not know, but we just know this much. If intron is translated, protein doesn't work. OK, so then.
So the uh, simple garden says, does this have any impact on what it does for long haulers? So once again, the damage, immune system dysregulation is present. How does this mechanism causes dysregulation is not known. Long, <coughs> excuse me, long hauler still, if it is a viral persistence, then that is a different issue. If it is the immune system dysregulation, that's a different issue. I think this is more of a viral mechanism than a long hauler mechanism. So that would be acute disease, simple garden. Uh, Dennis Sagar says, question, will you look into long haulers and T-cells they are now realizing? Absolutely. I've been looking at long hauler for a long time. Okay, perfect. So, James, thank you very much. There is a question from Guy Telfer. How is CV19 affecting immune cell division? Instead of immune cell division, wouldn't it be viral infected cell division? So very, very good question. Most of the immune cells have a way to pick up the virus in a packaged way. So they kind of put a straight jacket in the virus and pick it up. So they get less infected, number one. Number two. Many times when they are replicating, at their, that time they themselves are not sick and their machineries are working correctly. So if they were infected, their replication machinery does not work correctly and they cannot divide and multiply. So they, they would just die with that virus. You're very welcome. Cool. So this is what we have for today. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, James Eckerman, thank you very much for your uh, support yesterday. And I would see you tomorrow. Please stay safe and healthy. If you like the, these talks, please like, subscribe, and share. And if you wanted to support, there is a, there is a link in the description. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.